Good day, everyone. This is brought to you by Acumenter and Smokeless Chimney. We are going to go through several projects here as uh, they were taken from Fusion 360 to the CNC table and finishing. This project right here was a 38 inch long slab around 12 inches wide. It looked good for a bench. So I used the combine function to put some symbols into the into the table. I used the combine and cut tool to make a three millimeter by three millimeter channel. So it's three millimeters wide, three millimeters deep. Used a one eighth inch bit that would fit inside all the channels. And used a two dimensional pocket tool to make those. On this model this is an STL of Washington State and we used it to create some tool paths using a six millimeter down flute. The down flutes are very nice for cutting in wood because they they, they don't splinter nearly as much and make very nice patterns in wood. I looked at several tool paths and the one I wanted to use was seven hours this is what it looked like. Um, I'll try to give you a better idea of how the tool goes through with a simulation here. And if I put it on tail, it, you can see a little bit more. And I'll advance it. Here it is about halfway through and it's working on some of the details. This is a three-dimensional adaptive clearing and I find it to be one of the most elegant tool paths that Fusion 360 can make. You really don't know where the bits gonna be working next in the model and so you try to keep clear of it. It's not predictable as to where it's gonna go so you stay clear of the gantry and the spindle. On this project I wanted to make a tool rack I'm paying homage to this old Tony where I got the idea for this video and I was able to make engraving with a chamfer bit work and then I used a 3 8 inch high-speed steel four flute end mill to make the holes but the real thing I learned here was how to do engraving with a chamfer bit So I'll show you some of the tool. That's the uh, pockets for the tool. And then there are the engraving runs. One for the metric and one for the American inch fractions. So here's a, a simulation tool run. Very quick compared to using a very small end mill um, this is multiple times as fast. All right, one of the first things you have to do when you get your slab mounted on the table is face it. This is a 3 8 inch end mill, four flute high speed steel running at 2,000 millimeters per minute. It has a nine millimeter step over, which is not quite enough. You can see on the right side as it gets into some deeper material, it leaves just a little bit. I'll run some music here.
When I got to the end of this facing run, and when you're facing a material, it's typically around one millimeter deep at the lowest portion of the board. That's where I set it up at. You can see it skimming over some of the board right there. I stopped the tool and then moved it over four, four millimeters so that it would go over those parts that didn't get machined. This section of uh, video is at normal speed. It has sound. And you can see the bit through the engraving work. And the Z axis moves quite a bit up and down to make the characters look right. This is another view in time lapse of the chamfer bit cutting the characters. I didn't quite get it deep enough the first time, so I reset the z-axis and it cuts quite well into the Douglas fir 2x4. This is a 9mm high speed steel, full sleeve. It is great for removing material. I believe I have the plunge speed set very low. Uh, it seems to be a good practice. It uh, ramps down and spirals down and then starts cutting the tool. If you go too fast, you better have it fastened uh, down quite well. Sometimes I don't get it fastened down quite well, so it keeps the speed and speed conservative. Now, the reason I wanted to show this one was that I get some smoke coming out of the bottom, and the sound of it is representative. This is not in time. This is the 6mm down flute bit working on the State of Washington relief map. This was a very long, some 7 hours of machining time using a 3D adaptive toolpath. I have air trying to blow the sawdust chips out of the way and recorded sections of it in time lapse. Mm -hmm. 
getting toward the end here, you can see some of the details, the Puget Sound, Mount Rainier right in the center. Um, you really can't predict where the tool is going to go next. The depth of the pocket is 28 millimeters. All right, it is finished, and I start uh, moving the head off and vacuuming up all the sawdust to see what I've got. This is a model of a unique landform. It's a 3D adaptive pocket or clearing strategy. It uh, I find that it often starts off with this um, ever small pattern rectangle, but then it gets very interesting. This is how the project finished up. This is media, uh, an STL file that's been reduced to a toolpath of Meteor Crater in Arizona. This is the bench project that we started out with, and I'm using a 1 8 inch and flat end mill to machine out these pockets. Um, this is not something that can go quickly. These are very small teeth. This is small precision work, and the tool just kind of works away at it. There are about approximately three millimeters deep and approximately three millimeters uh, gap. Now I plan to paint them black and that was, uh, this is how I went about doing that. I then hand sanded and applied tape and cut, uh, I raised the tool path two millimeters so it wasn't cutting as deep down into the pockets, but it would pierce the tape in the area that I wanted to paint down into. It worked okay, it kind of tore the tape up, but I think it was worth doing on this project.
Here it is finishing up and running back and putting the hole in the sun. This is me trying to clean up some of the tape and put some primer down. After a couple coats of black, I started removing the tape. And you can kind of see how things looked. And this is how they are now. I had to glue a couple pieces back in. There's Pluto on the left. Neptune. Jupiter, Saturn. Mars. Earth, the Moon. Mercury and Venus. This is a project where I made a riverbed using parallel tool runs. This is the Colorado River prior to the Grand Canyon. This is how the meteor crater came out. And this is a Grand Canyon that I worked on. This is the final project or the final outcome of the tool rack. This is a bench with sprockets in it, with a few coats of resin. This is Washington State with three pours of resin. Um, I find it's too cold right now outside with the temperatures below freezing in western Washington. And I postponed most of my resin because I can't make the place warm enough. I thank you for watching. This video was produced by Acumenter please visit smokelesschimney.com, go to Reddit, our smokeless chimney, or search for smokeless chimney on Facebook.